Regulations of the city of Baltimore are going to end up depositing a lot more silt right near Barron's Wharf. And it's going to make his wharf way less useful and way less remunerative. And so he sues the city of Baltimore and he says, you have taken my property by depositing all this silt here. My property is no longer worth as much. And the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution says that any takings will be compensated, right? And so you've taken my property by creating this regulation and now you need to compensate me. And the Supreme Court says no. The Supreme Court says the Bill of Rights was really meant to regulate the federal government and not the state governments. And if the federal government had done this to you, you would have had a claim, maybe. But because it was Baltimore, a city which is a creature of the state, and the Bill of Rights is not meant to regulate the states, then you, uh, you are out of luck, Mr. Bear. One of the biggest areas of conflict when the Constitution was written and when it was ratified was how we were going to rein in the power of the federal government. Because the Articles of Confederation had not given the federal government enough power, there was a sense that this federal government that was created by the Constitution needed more power. But we were still not that far away from a revolution fought against centralized power, against the parliament and King George, who had dictatorial powers and the views of the colonists and then the revolutionaries. And so they wanted to make sure that the federal government had enough power, but not too much power. And in doing that, they gave some power to the federal government, some to the states. In doing that, they had a separation of powers and checks and balances. They thought, if we give a little bit of power to the executive, a little bit of power to the legislative, a little bit of power to the judiciary, we will spread out the power. We will have count ambition, counteracting ambition was one of the theories, right? Each branch, and we see this with Justice Marshall, each branch would try to get as much power as it could, and no branch would be able to get too much power. But there were people who were still concerned and who thought that, uh, that there was still going to be too much power in the federal government. James Madison was one of those. He wanted there to be an explicit list of rights that individuals had. And that's where we get the Bill of Rights. And it was kind of a deal at the ratification with some of the states will ratify the Constitution so long as we know there's going to be a Bill of Rights to protect individuals later. Some of the people who opposed a Bill of Rights were worried that if you wrote down rights, people would think those were the only rights that individuals had and they wouldn't have other rights. And there were some people who just didn't think rights were necessary. The, the structure of the Constitution would take care of everything. But the people who thought it's really important to write down individual rights and to set them right after we've ratified the Constitution to ratify a Bill of Rights so that people would have their rights to bear arms, their rights to free speech, their rights to religion, um, that this Bill of Rights would protect them from overreaching of the federal government. So one of the questions that comes up in the 19th century is, well, do the Bill of Rights regulate the states too? Do they disable the states from doing something or only the federal government? Barron versus Baltimore is actually a limit on the federal judiciary, right? It's, it's a counterexample to the many, many examples we can think of uh, that aggrandize the power of the Supreme Court and the federal courts in general during the 19th century. This is a case where the court says, no, the Bill of Rights, as enforced by us in the federal constitution, is not going to govern the states. So you can see it as a little bit of pulling back from the aggrandizement of power in the federal court. Sure.